Nice All right, Evo. that is an Icevo. Look at that. Welcome back. Today we're gonna to talk about the very basics of automotive photography at night. This should be a pretty simple video. We're gonna wash our cars, we're gonna get gas, we're gonna park at this convenience, and then we're gonna find somewhere more aesthetic to, to go, and that should be it. And we're gonna talk about the basics of cameras. So if you're interested in car photography, come along. So Anthony, he's here taking photos. He has the Audi over there, and we're gonna take turns. What are you shooting with? I got a Canon ESOR, and I have a 24 by 105 millimeter F4, um, I believe the, the I, ISM, I can't remember the exact, like. We'll put it in the, yeah. we'll, we'll put it in the, in the yeah, in the thing. <laughs> in the thing. Okay. I have a uh, Black Mist number five filter on it. I've been shooting pretty much round one over 80 to one over 100, F4, ISO is 800. First up is me, I'm gonna wash my car and he's gonna take photos. I've tried doing both at the same time, by the way. It's impossible, the <laughs> timer, it's really stressful. So the first thing, right, is lighting. It's nighttime, obviously, but you wanna look for places that have lighting that's conducive to what you're trying to do. You don't wanna look for a well-lit place. Shadows and darkness give nice contrast. So I like that it's dark here. What you kinda wanna achieve is a spotlight effect, unless you're trying to show certain things in the foreground and background. So lighting is the first thing to look for. You don't always have the best lighting to choose from, and then that's when you have to start thinking about other concepts, like, Shutter speed. I got like these pimples. My hair is a mess. I'm Not bald, so I just wear this shit. Where? So, so let's talk about shutter speed. What were you trying to balance with your shutter speed there? Uh, for the most part, if you weren't in it, it was kind of the light to make sure with it wasn't overexposed or underexposed. And then the other parts when I had you in it, I was trying to adjust the shutter speed so then it wasn't too much movement. So like you had like an even movement in, in, the, in the shot. So, so you were trying to balance light with motion blur, yeah. right? And that's what, you, that's what you can do with the shutter speed. If you turn the shutter speed down, you're gonna get more light, but you're also gonna get more motion blur, which could be a good thing. You may want that, but you don't want so much motion blur that your actual subject is out of focus or your background is out of focus if you want your background to be in focus. So what he was trying to do is trying to have some hand blur and in a wheel and proper focus and exposure, and he was controlling that with shutter speed. So that's what you can do with shutter speed. He wanted to use the shutter speed specifically because he wanted to avoid using ISO, which is what we'll talk about next and why he was avoiding turning that up too much. Before we had digital cameras, you would order film in a certain ISO. And ISO was essentially how bright the film would be. Um, it stands for International Standards Organization, I'm pretty sure. In, in digital cameras, they've maintained this as a digital change in the photo, photo's exposure. So you can think of ISO as basically a uh, artificial brightening of the image in camera, right? So um, the, the reason why you don't want to mess with ISO too much, though, is because the more ISO you introduce, you're going to get noise in your shadows and your blacks. And that can get really ugly really, really fast. So that's why he was turning his shutter speed down to get brighter while sacrificing some motion blur because he did not want the noise from ISO. There are ways to correct this in, in post, but generally speaking, less ISO is better. So with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and watch the car and I'm gonna photograph him this time. Wow, I parked, uh, well, like a Porsche owner, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're in the lines. So for me, the things that I thought were most difficult were composition and aperture. So let's talk about camera angles. First of all, I had a fixed 35 millimeter lens. I didn't talk about my gear. Uh, oh. This is a Sony a7 III. 
3, not an S3, which means it's photo focused, not video focused. And on this camera, I have a Sigma Art 35 millimeter prime lens. On top of the lens, I've got a Black Mist number five, 67 millimeter. And what this does is it kind of creates this glowing effect of light. It works really well for like natural lights, but I've found that for neon and stuff, it doesn't actually work that well because the glow looks too fake. So composition, I had a hard time predicting what he was gonna do because I wasn't sure what direction he was gonna go in. And I wasn't really talking. And that's okay, because it's not really the subject's job to set you up for a good photo. However, you as a photographer should be able to predict what the subject's gonna do, and I didn't do a very good job of that. Added to that was the complexity of, we were in a stall and I had a fixed 35 millimeter lens, which means that I couldn't zoom out for a wider lens, I had to actually move my body, but there's walls behind me. So that made it a little bit difficult. Those things aren't necessarily low light related though. So let's talk about aperture. So I had my aperture all the way down to 2.8, and sometimes I dropped even lower to 1.4. What that does is it allows me to have a brighter image with a higher shutter speed, which means it's easier to keep things in focus, all while keeping my ISO low. What that also does is it really makes a very narrow depth of field. So when I dropped down to 1.4, my aperture was um, so narrow that it was really only good for like photographing a single water droplet. For the drying shot, he did a re two really good photos that made great use of aperture. So what he did is he photographed my car from the back with my car in focus and one with the background in focus. Both of those had a very narrow aperture. But he photographed them in relatively the same spot, so I'm gonna stitch them together and we'll have a composition where everything is in focus. And that's called focus racking. This allows us to keep everything in focus and still have a brighter image. So there's three things to control light with. Shutter speed, ISO, and aperture. All of those were relevant here, and even in this fairly well-lit night environment. Now we're gonna get some gas, we're gonna photograph the cars getting gas, and then we're gonna go downtown for a beauty shoot. Hopefully. Yeah. I'm not beautiful. My hair. <laughs> Okay, so we just finished the beauty shot. Try. <laughs> yeah, uh, we got kicked out by the cops. Oh, you went first, so what did you think about photographing my car in that environment? Not bad, like it's definitely a good scene, it's just there was a lot of people, like a lot of people. So we talked about shutter speed, we talked about aperture, and we talked about ISO already, mm -hmm. right? Um, this so is now the colors of the car, because we had a white and black, yes. and, and the same thing, and trying to play with reflections a little. Right. So this is more of what positioning, I guess? Yeah, well, so a lot of people think you can't photograph a black car at night. Well, I say you can. Photos. So, <laughs> but, so, so what, what, the way you photograph a black car at night is, well, first you have to have the right equipment, right? So, mm -hmm. so that, that's an issue. Yeah. But you don't have to have the nicest, the nicest stuff. I'm using a Sony a7 III. It is middle of the road. Admittedly, it's, it's decent at low light, though. Um, but what, what's important is, setting your scene up to be advantageous to the, to, the, to, the, to the subject, in this case, a black car. And what I decided to opt for was focusing on the reflections. You can use the reflections to show the outline of the black, of the black car without overexposing your entire shot. But more so than that, the, definitely what, what the difficulty we had was planning ahead a little bit and, and being as quick as possible. So what we had to do is we drove through to see what the place was like, and it was wild. And so he parked his car, got in position while I waited around the corner. I Camera. pulled forward and parked right in front of the restaurant. Mm -hmm. And you actually had a pretty good amount of time with my car. I did, because it, did, it seemed like we hit a gap. <laughs> it did, but it, then all of a sudden it kind of flooded and I was like, all right, let's change real quick and then hopefully we could hit another gap, but the gap didn't really come and then the police no. came. Yeah. So if you want to get good nighttime photos, you, gotta, you have to learn your aperture, your shutter speed and your ISO, and how they affect your image. You have to learn how to use light to your advantage, whether you have a dark subject or a light subject. In this case, we had a white and a black car. And you also have to learn how to position your subject in a way that's advantageous for the light. We had some other issues, but overall, yeah. I think we got some good, good images. Yeah. If you want to see all of them, check out our Instagrams. And with that, 
What's your Instagram? Oh, T. Lacone. And Amateur TC. All right, thanks for watching. Have a good one. Uh -huh.